Stop trying to get healed and be healed. Amen. How do you get healed? By getting saved. Hallelujah. Jesus bore our sins so we can be forgiven. Hey, eternal life is ours, right? As we claim this blessing, as we confess it by faith, God makes it good in our life. And guess what? Jesus bore our sickness so we can be healed. Amen. D divine health is ours, right? As we claim this blessing, as we confess it by faith, God manifests in our body. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. As long as Jesus is a sin forgiver, he's a sickness healer. It's the same transaction. Come on. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 1.20. For all God's promises in Christ are yes. And through Christ, amen. In Christ. Through Christ, right? Heaven, health, healing, peace love, dominion, prosperity, everything we talk about on this platform, right? Who you are in Christ, the authority you carry, the blessings you inherit. God's answer to every one of them is yes. Hallelujah. Come on, right now in the comments, write yes. Say yes. Hallelujah. But, but they come with a condition. Listen, they come when you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, all right? Genesis 2, verse 16, it says this, but the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, it says you're sure to die. Listen to me right now. All sickness, all disease, all addiction, every hardship, it comes from this right here. God gave us a choice. He gave us free will. All right? If he didn't give us free will, we'd be like a bunch of robots down here. No. And there can't be love without free will. Amen. He gave us free will. Adam him, he could have ate from any tree, right? He had one job. Hallelujah. One job, right? Uh, first thing I'm going to do when I get to heaven, I'm going to go up. I'm going to find Adam and be like, dude, you had one job, man, right? One job. But listen to me. When he made this choice, right? Sin entered his blood and it led to spiritual death. Okay. For Romans 5.12, it says this. When Adam sinned, the entire world was affected. Sin entered human experience, and death was the result. And so death followed this sin, casting its shadow over all humanity, because all have sinned, okay? Adam had a direct command from God, and because he disobeyed, he spiritually died right then. That moment, his relationship with God, it was broken, right? Spirit first, body second, right? Because of this, that moment, he started to physically die. Die. Right then, his body started getting old. His body started getting a little crackly, right? He started dying right then. Listen to me. Adam's sin and the consequences of that sin included the whole world. It included you and it included me, okay? So you came to this platform today. I'm telling you, whatever it is, you're here for a spiritual healing. Sickness is a spiritual problem. Why can you say that, Mike? Because none of it would be here if Adam didn't sin. I'm telling you, the root of all sickness, it's spiritual. The root of all viruses, all, all inflammation, all tumors, right? It's spiritual. But come on, I got good news for you. That's why God sent Jesus to pay for our sins and to put us in right standing with God. I'm going to share three scriptures with you. Romans 3 verse 23. For we have all sinned and are in need of the glory of God. Yet through his powerful declaration of acquittal, hallelujah, God freely gives away his righteousness. His gift of love and favor now cascades over us. All because Jesus has liberated us from the guilt punishment and power of sin. Can you say amen? The Colossians 1.20, and by the blood of his cross, everything in heaven and earth is brought back to himself, back to its original intent, restored to innocence again. And one more, 1 Corinthians 15.22, even as all who are in Adam die, so also all who are in Christ are made alive. Come on, hallelujah. Both sin and sickness, they came into the world through the fall of of the human race, right? So we got to look to the healing of both, right? In the savior of the human race. Know this right now. Get this in your spirit right now. Grab a hold of this right now. If he was merciful enough to forgive you when you were a sinner, I'm here to tell you he's merciful enough to help you and heal you when you're a part of his family. Can you say amen? 
Come on, hallelujah. There's, there, there's a story in the Bible in Mark 2. It talks about, uh, the, I, I call them the four crazy friends, okay? Uh, the, the four friends had a paralyzed friend, a paralyzed from birth, and, and, and they heard about Jesus, and they were going to get their friend to Jesus to get them healed, okay? They got there, place was packed out, right? And they couldn't get in, so they went up through the roof and, and put a hole in the roof to get to Jesus, amen? Well, listen, when they, when they, when they, got him down there, right? Jesus said to him, listen, your sins are forgiven, right? And what happened, right? Religion, the Pharisees, they got all bent out of shape. Who the heck do you think you are? That's blasphemy. Who do you think you are? But then here's what uh, Jesus said in Mark 2, verse 10. It says, but to convince you that the Son of Man has been given authority to forgive sins, I say to this man, stand up, Pick up your stretcher and walk home. Hallelujah. Immediately, the man was healed and sprang to his feet in front of everyone and left for home. Salvation, it's not only for forgiveness of sins. No, it gives you the power to rise up and walk. Hallelujah. Do that right now, wherever you are. You rise up right now and take back everything the devil stole from you right now. If you couldn't walk, get up and walk. Hallelujah. If you couldn't bend, bend. If you were full of tears, I want you to start laughing at the devil right now. Come on, you got to grab this today. The same Bible that gives you John 3, 16, right, also says, who himself bore our sins on his own body on that tree, that we haven't died to sins, might live for righteousness, and by whose stripes you were healed. Hallelujah. That's good news. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can and he will make believers whole today. Get this in your spirit if you're any bit saved you're every bit whole come on jesus hallelujah he provided the double cure hallelujah the double cure john 10 10 the thief comes not except to steal kill and destroy right and then first john 3 8 the bible says this for this reason the son of god came that he might destroy write that in the comments right now right destroy say it out loud say destroy for this reason this is why the Son of God came, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Well, listen to me. The works of the devil are sin and sickness, okay? So God came not to destroy one, no, both. <laughs> he came to save you and he came to heal you. Grab that. Salvation. Hallelujah. It's a gift from God. It means to be made whole in your spirit, your soul, and your body. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Greek word for saved, it's sozo. Amen. It means to save, to keep safe to rescue from peril or destruction, to make whole from injury, to save from perishing and suffering or disease, to prosper, to make well, to restore to health. Hallelujah. That's the gospel, right? And guess what? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes it. And we just said what salvation includes. So guess what? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God to deliverance to everyone everyone who believes. Keep going. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it's the power of God to prosperity to everyone who believes. And one more, how about this? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God to healing and to health for everyone who believes. Say this right now. Say, I believe. Write that down. I believe. Hallelujah. God did not create sickness and disease, period, period. If someone told you he allows sickness or disease to teach you a lesson, you've been lied to. Uh, and maybe you've been taught healing isn't for today. Listen, then you've been robbed, okay? Jesus' mission, it didn't stop with sin. He came so you can have life and you can have it more abundantly. Can you say amen? I said they have life and have it more abundantly. Your last days of being sick, beaten up, busted, and disgusted, they end today in the mighty name of Jesus. And let me add this. Jesus didn't come to give you comfort so you could cope with the works of the devil. No. Again, he came to destroy the works of the devil. Listen to me. And since death is the work of the devil, and since sickness is an agent of death, hallelujah, and for this reason, the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Come on. That, that, right there. That's how you know. 
know if you go to a dead religious church, right? Or if you go to a living Christian church, right? Religion, it teaches you to cope with sickness and disease. You know, you just got to deal with it. You got to carry your cross. But no, Jesus said, I took your sickness and disease so you can have life and you can have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew eight sixteen. That evening, many demon-possessed possessed people uh, brought to Jesus. He, he cast out evil spirits with a simple command, and he healed most of the sick. <laughs> I just seen if you're paying attention. No, he healed all of the sick, okay? And verse 17, this fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, who said, he took our sickness and he removed our diseases. That's for you. And that's for you to let everyone you know know. If you serve a God that don't heal, you're serving the wrong God, okay? Because the prophets of old, come on, they testified. The way you were going to know it was the Messiah, is that he wasn't just going to speak. No, he would take take authority over sickness and disease and make everyone who put their faith in him every bit whole. Come on, say that every bit whole. Jesus is the only one that fits that description. Every other religion, every other temple, nobody ever gets healed, right? But in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we ain't under the dominion of disease. Disease is under the dominion of the believer who's filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, I said hallelujah sickness is of the devil it's of the devil come on if you think sickness is normal yeah you're going to be sick a lot but once you know once you see that sickness comes from the devil once you see that jesus gave you dominion over all the works of the devil then you know it comes alive and comes real on the inside of you i don't have to put up with this one more day i'm free i said i'm Free in the mighty name of Jesus. Man, if you think I'm just doing this right now to hold a pep rally, right? No, I'm preaching this to you today. I, I'm going to preach it tomorrow. I'm going to preach it all next week. I'm going to preach it everywhere I go every day for the rest of my life. Whatever sickness has been attacking your family, I'm here to tell you right now, you're only one prayer away from the power of God setting your family free in the mighty name of Jesus. Write this right now. Sickness is of the devil. Come on, I said, write it down. Sickness is of the devil. Hallelujah. Come on, Luke 13. Jesus was teaching. Uh, he healed another woman who was crippled 18 years by a spirit of infirmary. And again, religion got bent out of shape, right? Why? Because he was healing on the Sabbath, right? But in verse 16, Jesus said this, this dear woman, a daughter of Abraham has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Come on again. Sickness comes from the devil. But what happened? Acts 10 38. Hallelujah. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed from the devil. Why? Because God was with him, healing all from the oppression of the devil. Uh, hallelujah. Come on, the Father wants me to tell everyone listening right now and anyone listening to this in the future who's being oppressed by the devil that he's with you and he sets you free now in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive that right now. Receive that right now. Hallelujah. Uh, sickness wasn't caused. You know, people ask me, you know, oh, how, how do you know sickness isn't from God? You know, because if it was, <laughs> Jesus went around undoing all his father's work, right? He, but, he, but he didn't. He didn't say, I've come to this earth to undo my father's work. No, he said, I've come to do my father's work. I only do what, my, what I see my father do, right? Anybody, let me, let me tell you this. Anybody, anybody that thinks sickness is from God, they don't have a theological problem. No, they got a mental problem, right? You can't see a child with cancer and think that's Jesus. You can't see drug addicts with pockmarks in their face, their life being destroyed and think that's Jesus. No, when, when you see sickness, when you see that, you can clearly see it's hell at work. And when you see healing, like, like people have seen at every healing school we've done, you can see it's the glory of God being manifest that Jesus is the answer, that Jesus is the ultimate all and all. Number one, hallelujah, say this out loud. Say this, I don't care where you are, say it. Sickness is of the devil. Come on, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Say it again. Write it in the comments. I want this to become real to you today. Today's sickness is leaving your body. Today's sickness is leaving your family in the mighty name of Jesus. And number two, sickness is listed in the Bible not as a blessing, but as a curse. I said it's listed in the Bible not as a blessing, but as a curse. Deuteronomy 28, it says, if you don't serve the Lord your God, all these curses will come upon you, right? And then it lists them all, all right? It lists the curses. And then one verse, right? Verse 6, and, and on this list, it says everything, you know? It says cancer. It says your body destroyed, your family destroyed, your, life, your, your financial system destroyed, everything destroyed. Then verse 61 says, Every sickness and disease there is, even those not mentioned in this book of the law. Come on, that's verse 61. Why why did he have to say that? Because a hard-headed people like us, oh, you didn't say this disease. Well, guess what? Any disease I forgot to mention, that's to include us. What am I trying to tell you? Anything you got going on in your life right now that's bad. Hallelujah, right here. Hallelujah. (laughs) He set you free. How do I say that? Galatians 3.13. But Christ hallelujah, has redeemed us. Not will redeem us when we get to heaven. No, has redeemed us from all the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that is hung on a tree. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Listen to me. So since Jesus redeemed us from all the curse of the law and sickness is clearly listed as a curse, then you know, you know, you don't have to put up with it. Now, one more day, everyone say it so the devil can hear you say, I am redeemed. Hallelujah. Come on. I am redeemed. Right. And you ain't just redeemed from sin. You're redeemed from all sickness and all disease. Every sickness and disease there is. Even those not mentioned in this book of law, by his sacrifice, he paid it all. Come on, if you're thankful for that, say it it out loud. Praise you, Jesus. Come on. So so how do you make sure? That's why we're here today. How, How do you make sure none of these diseases are your portion? Hallelujah. It's easy. He made it so easy by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, by taking part in the covenant. Listen to me, outside of God, there's sickness and disease. If you ain't saved, you got zero protection against Satan, right? Sickness, disease, addiction, lack, sorrow. Yeah, it'll be your portion, you know? Even if you are saved, but you don't know who you are in Christ, right? You you ain't going to be any better off. Satan, listen to me, right? This is important. Satan's got no right, and he knows he's got no right to attack your family or you when you're saved, amen? He knows it. But but listen, he he might not be able to stop you from getting to heaven, but he's going to try real hard to get you to quicker, right? Or at least to make you miss out on the quality of life that God wants you to live. He wants to stop you from fulfilling the the call God has on your life, but he can, and he will get away with it if you don't know. If you don't know, Isaiah 5 verse 13 says, therefore, my people go into captivity without knowing it because they got no knowledge of God, right? And Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? I said this before. People say, oh, what you don't know won't hurt you. No, that's garbage, okay? What you don't know will literally destroy you. It'll kill you and you'll end up in hell, you know? And then people say, oh, ignorance is bliss. No, it's just ignorance, okay? And it keeps you in the dark right where the devil wants you to be, under his bondage, right? Again, but the good news is that's why you signed on today. Hallelujah. Right now, this platform is going to bring you a time of refreshing. This platform is going to bring you a time of strengthening. Well, every time you come on here, every single time, you're going to get a Holy Ghost oil change, okay? Every time you sign on here, your body's going to get a Holy Ghost tune-up. We're going to show Show you in the Bible, hallelujah, in the Bible, in the word of God, that Jesus paid the price for our redemption, for our freedom, for our physical, our mental, and our emotional health, for our peace, for our sound mind, for our prosperity, for our wholeness, hallelujah, come on, every single one of you, I, you're an overcomer, you're you're a nation shaker, hallelujah, can you say amen, God never intended for any one of you to be overcome by the devil, you're not victim 
problems, okay? But you are victors in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, listen to me. That's why, that's why it's so important to say yes to Jesus. You can be redeemed. You don't ever have to be sick again. Did you just say you don't ever have to be sick again? Yes. You can't say things like that if you ain't a Christian. But I'm here to tell you, if you're a Christian, if you're a born-again believer in Jesus, you don't ever have to be sick another day in your life. Hallelujah. Colossians 1.13, he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Come on. Satan's dominion is broken over your life the moment, the second that you're born again, the second you receive Jesus. Come on. Disease, sickness, weakness, failure. It no longer rules over you. Old habits can't control your life anymore. Hallelujah. Listen to the, the same faith that allows you to walk out of the kingdom of darkness without any hindrance from the devil, right? The same faith that translates you straight into the kingdom of his dear son. It's the same faith that transfers you, hallelujah, from the kingdom of sickness into the, that of divine health. Hallelujah. It's the same faith that will translate you from the kingdom of poverty into that of prosperity. Your faith has translating powers. Hallelujah. So today, stick your faith out because you are far above all principalities and powers. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Say that right now. Write that in the comments. I got faith. I got faith. Hallelujah. You've been delivered from the power of darkness. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 3, right? Uh, there, there was a religious leader named Nicodemus, right? He, he came to speak about Jesus, right? About all the miracles he was doing. And in verse 3, Jesus said this to him. He said this, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Come on. You got to be born again. Salvation is a change in nature from a child of the devil to a child of God. Come on. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Hallelujah. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. There's another translation that says, if any man be enfolded in Christ. Come on, I like that. If you bake, if you bake, right, to be enfolded is when you got a bowl and then let's say you got brownie batter, you got an egg, you got some butter, right? You put all those ingredients together and then you go like this and you fold it, and you fold it, and you fold it, hallelujah, what happens, all of a sudden, you ain't butter no more, hallelujah, you become one, hallelujah, you become one with Jesus, hallelujah, all things new, right, God don't patch up your old life, you don't make certain repairs on, on your old life, he gives you a new life through a new birth, come on, you ain't a refurbished mattress, no, all things new, ask yourself right now, who am I? And let the word define you. Come on, the word says you're righteous. The word says you're holy. The word says you're healed. Hallelujah, Galatians 2.20. That old man died on the cross. You were crucified with him and the new person came out. If you knew who I was one week ago, hallelujah, allow me to reintroduce myself. Hey, you are who God says you are. Don't let your history hinder you from your destiny. You're only held back by yourself. You're not who they said you were. You're not who the doctor said you were. You're not who, who your mom said you were. No, you're who God says you are. With God, you don't have a history. No, you only got a destiny. And my Bible says that destiny is full of hope and glory. Hallelujah. Come on. John 5, 24. I'll tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they've already passed from death into life. Again, come on, death is a form of sickness and decay, okay? There's no bigger miracle than salvation. I'm telling you right now, it's the most important decision you're ever going to make. Your eternal destiny depends on that decision. I'd rather everyone that signs on to this platform be sick 
and go to heaven than, than to get healed today and be on your way to hell, right? I'm telling you, but once you understand, and you're going to understand the more you listen, once you understand there's more benefits in Christ and escaping to heaven, you're going to start enjoying them, amen? I said you're going to start enjoying them today. Psalms 103, verse 2, bless the Lord, oh my soul, <laughs> and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with love, kindness, and tender mercy who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. It says right there, <laughs> not to forget his benefits. Hallelujah, that's plural. There's many benefits. There's benefits are both for your, your soul and your body, for salvation and healing. Jesus forgives all sins and he heals all diseases. Come on, so right now, don't remember just some of his benefits. No, claim them all today. Hallelujah. I said, said claim them all today you're here to receive your benefit package from heaven in the mighty name of jesus and and, and real quick let's talk about a couple of the benefits all right uh, that, that come with salvation before we pray amen anybody like benefit packages i do hallelujah this is your benefit package salvation number one it includes healing amen hallelujah healing is the will of god for you i'm gonna say that again Healing is the will of God for you. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, it says this, Surely, absolutely, certainly, for sure, definitely, without a doubt, without question, it's got to be the case. He bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. He was wound for our, wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And again, Matthew 8, 17, he took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. He healed over 2,000 and years ago that's settled god doesn't pick and choose who he's he who he heals you either mix your faith and receive or you don't amen jesus is not a schizo <laughs> he ain't double-minded he wants everyone to be healed that includes you why because he already paid for it he said i'm the great i am amen i'm the great i am not the great i was or the great i might be someday no i'm the great i am hallelujah that's a benefit that's a benefit from receiving Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And, and then salvation deals with your spirit. It deals with your spirit. Come on, Romans 12, 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. As long as we think like the world thinks, we're going to have what the world has. I mean, you choose. You can choose to think about the bigness of your problems, or you can choose to think about the bigness of your God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4 24. And to be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within as your new life and live in union with him. For God has recreated you. Hallelujah. All over again in his perfect righteousness. And you now belong to him in the realm of true holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a complete change. How many people listening right now you want to change in your health? in your relationships, in your finances. Come on, there's just something on the inside of all of us, right, that knows there's more than this life, right? There, uh, he's got an amazing plan for all of us. And I promise you, if we just turn to him, he's going to help us. He's going to guide us, right? It's time to walk in the peace that Jesus gives. No more carrying around the guilt and the shame in the past. You don't have to carry it one more day. First Peter 5, 7, pour out all your worries, all your concerns, all your anxieties, all of your stress, and leave them there because he's always watching over over you right there that scripture hallelujah that's a permission slip from god you don't ever have to worry or be anxious another day in your life he said cast all your cares on him do that right now hallelujah give it to god right now the world the world wants you to worry but he wants you to have a peace that passes all understanding and right now in the mighty name of jesus i release that peace upon you now in the mighty name of jesus. let the anointing of, of god touch you right now let him flood you right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet receive his peace now in the mighty name of jesus come on receive that hallelujah
And this is one more benefit, one more benefit before we pray, right? <laughs> and this is a benefit that many Christians, right? They miss out on. And many Christians even get mad about. But guess what? Salvation includes prosperity. Hallelujah. And if you didn't hang up and sign out right now, uh, good for you. Because I'm here to tell you the Lord wants you to prosper. Hallelujah. He wants you to prosper. Third John 1, 2, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers above all things, not just save your soul. No, he wants you healthy and he wants you to prosper. He says, the Bible says he delights in the prosperity of his servants. Come on. I know you've heard other preachers say I have, right? Oh, how many, you know, we all go through ups and downs. No, that's garbage. Hallelujah. Psalms 1, 3 says he will be standing firm like a flourishing tree planted by God's design, deeply rooted by the brooks of bliss, bearing fruit in every season of life. Listen, he's never dry, never fainting, ever blessed and ever prosperous. And then Psalms 115, 114, it says this, God himself will fill you with more and more. Blessings upon blessings will be heaped upon you and upon your children. It said more and more. It said blessings upon blessings. We go from glory to glory. He wants every single one of you to prosper. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessings blessing of the Lord makes a person rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Come on. You can have sorrow free abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Second Peter 3 9. God's not willing that any should perish. But all should come to repentance. God wants every single one of you to be born again. If it was up to him, all 7.8 billion people in the world, they'd be going to heaven. But it ain't up to him. It's up to you today. Will you give him your life? I'm telling you, your spirit, your soul, and your body. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says this. Today, I've given you the choice between life and death between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life. He even gave you the answer to the question. He said, oh, choose life. Choose life. And I'm asking you today, I'm asking you right now to choose life, heaven or hell, blessings or curses, health or sickness, wealth or poverty. That's a choice. God told you what to say. He said, choose life. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of healing. Today, every chain is broken off of your life. Today, all things become new and you receive everything heaven has for you. Come on, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Hallelujah. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for right now doing a quick work in every heart under the sound of my voice. Right now, all doubt, all pains, anger, unforgiveness, let it be broken off of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Every single one of you here, come on, ask yourself right now, if you die today, is your heart right with God? Ask yourself that. Is your heart right with God? Do you know where you'd go? Do you know where you'd spend eternity? It's either a heaven or hell, right? But the good news is you don't have to go to hell. Jesus paid the price for you and for me. God loves you. He wants you to come to him just the way you are. And listen to me. I don't know everybody on here. And, I, and I'm not sure where you're at today, you know? I don't know the disappointments you had. I don't know the setbacks you've endured. But I know this. It ain't over. It ain't the end of your story. If he's for you... Who can be against you? God loves you. He sees you. He's got a plan to help you begin again. Come on, because with God, hallelujah, it ain't never too late. God's a God of fresh starts, a God of do-overs, a God of new beginnings. Hallelujah. And guess what? He's a God of great finishes. Come on, Jesus said, come to me. Hallelujah. All who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. All that matters is you surrender. All that matters, the Bible says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And one more scripture, Isaiah 43, 18. It says this, but forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. 
Hallelujah, I'm about to do something new. He's doing that something new right now. He brought you to this platform today so you can hear this message. He's about to do something new. Hallelujah, I'll create rivers in the dry wasteland. So my chosen people, that's you, so you can be refreshed restored and revived. Come on, Jesus is calling you right now. He loves you. If you're listening, all right? If you're listening, if you've never given your heart to Jesus, I'm going to ask you, will you give it to him today? Hallelujah. If you're listening, you know, and, and you're just not serving God the way you want to, you know, the way you should be, you know? You used to be red hot on fire for the Lord, right? But, but it feels like the storms of life have just punched you in the face, you know? Maybe it was friends. Maybe it was family. Maybe religion hurt you, right? Or, or just the craziness of this world has just overwhelmed you with worry, with anxiety, with stress. I'm here to tell you right now, it don't matter how many times you tried and failed, God wants to transform your life today. Hallelujah. Ask yourself on a scale of one to five, you know what? Being uh, Five being red hot on fire for God. You know, I mean, you're telling everybody you know about Jesus, right? Jesus was a five for you. He gave you his all. <laughs> he gave you his all. He died on a cross for you. And I think it's time right now, hallelujah, that we give him our all. So today, you just make a fresh commitment. You say, you know what, Jesus, I'll give you my life today. I'm, I'm coming back to give you my all. I'm here to tell you he wants to restore you. Let today, let today be a fresh start. Come on, he ain't going to force this on you. There's no one that can do this for you. I can't pray you in or I would. You're the one that has to make a decision to come to the Lord. Amen. And one more category, right? If you're listening right now and you just ain't sure. You just ain't sure. The devil's been lying to you, saying, hey, you ain't saved. You ain't good. You're no good. Right? Today, you want to make sure. Hallelujah. He's calling you right now. So if that's you, if any one of those categories, if that's you, I just want you to say this prayer with me with, it, with, with your mouth and, and believe it in your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. And, and don't just repeat the words. Say, say them with everything you got. Say them loud. Say them proud. Say them boldly. This ain't just a ritual. This is a prayer. You're praying to God, not me. Amen. So right now, repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. I thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. I believe you rose again. Hallelujah. And you're coming back again for me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the loss and a hunger for the things of God. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. Today, all things become new. Today, I turn my back on the world and I turn towards you, Jesus. I make you my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm on my way to heaven because I got Jesus in my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, if you prayed that prayer, I say this. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the benefit package. <laughs> Welcome to healing. Welcome to prosperity. Welcome to wholeness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I, I encourage you right now. Come on, get involved with a good church, a Holy Ghost filled church that preaches the full counsel of the word of God. Get in your Bible. Get in the Word of God. It's your life. It's your medicine. Lord, today's just the beginning. God's gonna. God's got his hand on you. Hallelujah. And he ain't never going to leave you. He ain't never going to forsake you. You're going places you've never been before. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, if you got saved, if you said that prayer with me, I want you to write that down. I want you to write that down right now in the comments. Say, I prayed that prayer. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. And before I go, I just want to remind you, listen, go to fishministries.org slash give, right? I need you to sign up to be a monthly ministry supporter, right? Where you can make a single gift at fishministries.org slash give, right? This support helps the ministry to continue, right? It funds these live streams, right? That we give away for free. It funds all the content on our platform that we give away for free. It funds our events that we're doing that we don't charge for, amen? It, it funds our outreaches to win souls for the kingdom of God. It helps us reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, help us spread that gospel today. Help us to set the captives free. Do your part today. Come on, and sow into fertile ground. I'm here to tell you, we're fertile ground in the mighty name of Jesus. One more time, fishministries.org slash give. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name.